So welcome back to the channel. My name is Coach Ben. Today's video, I wanted to share with you a few ways that you can make money as a soccer coach moving into 2021. So as I mentioned in the intro, today I wanted to go over a few ways that I've made money myself and some ways that you can make money in 2021, assuming COVID kind of eases up and we're, you know, you're able to practice, I guess, in, uh, in larger groups. So number one we're going to go through is starting your own private soccer training business. There's a distinction between starting your own business and using a service to offer your services. Um, starting your own business, I literally mean starting your own business. So starting your own private training organization where you're doing everything yourself, you're handling your own marketing, you're handling your own advertisements, you're your own boss. I think that's one of the hardest ones to do because it literally could become a nine to five and it could consume everything and you may end up just sticking with that, which is, which is great. There's nothing wrong with that. But in terms of side hustles, making money on the side while you're trying to pursue a full-time coaching, this one will probably be one of the harder ones. But the pros is you're your own boss. You get to set your own hours. You get to set your own rates. You get to pick and choose who you want to train. Okay, number one is making your own private training business. Number two is using other services to offer your service. Now, what I mean by other services, so the one that I use myself is Coach Up. What essentially this is, is you are putting your details out there about what your training session is like, how much you're gonna, how much it costs you, how much you're willing to travel, just some basic information. And what Coach Up does is they push your profile to potential clients and then you're able to book through that system. The pros of using services that you have to, that you're paying to off put your services on, the pros is that they handle everything. So all your calendar, all your payment processes, your insurance and everything is done through that, through that service. But the cons is that you have to almost always pay. Now, the payment could vary from 50 bucks to 100 bucks to 75 to annually to monthly, whatever it may be, whatever service you're using. But for the premium services that have a lot of clients already there that are looking for coaches, you're going to pay you're going to pay a premium in order to get on that platform, okay? Now, one would be coach up, two would be one-on-one -on -one soccer index, which I'll leave a pop up right here. Three would be Facebook. Facebook, you could advertise your flyers or you could advertise a link to your website or you could do your own ads where you're doing Facebook ads where you're paying and you're having it pushed. You could just create a Facebook page where you're doing your own promotion, but that would kind of fall on lines of starting your own business. But it also follows under the second one because you're using another medium and platform to push your services. And the last one would be Craigslist. Craigslist is purely just posting an advertisement. So it could be a flyer or whatever it is, offering your services into whatever kind of county or city that you live in. These are all great, um, but you have to think about the how much money you're going to get from that because they obviously have to take a service fee. They have to make money somehow in order to keep offering the ability to provide clients and ease of finding profiles and coaches finding clients. Um, definitely look into those if you if you want to make some money on the weekends. That's what a, a good one that I would go to. Number three would be joining a local youth organization. Now every city and state and, and soccer organization in America is going to be different, but if you can find a local sports organization that does youth soccer, you could become a paid coach. And what you would be doing in a nutshell, you'd be making between minimum wage up to $40 an hour, depending on your experiences or the licenses or how good of a coach you are. And essentially what you're doing is you are just handling coaching the rec, the recreational side of soccer. So these are kids that are maybe they're introduced into the sport or maybe they're just developing but the benefits of this is you will discover what age groups you like to work with. You will experience a wide variety of kids and abilities. And that's really going to test you as a coach to see if you're able to adapt. And you'll really learn and you'll grow as a coach being able to teach in these environments. Now, this is also called like a foundation phase. So obviously you're learning the foundation 
kids are traditionally younger. Um, they usually stop around like 12 years old and then that's when they go on to something bigger or better or they just stop playing at all. Hopefully they don't do the last one. With the youth organization, the, the pros is you're able to work with a wide variety. You'll be making money. You'll probably get at least part-time working 20 hours a week, maybe more depending on how good you are. Maybe you're willing to do weekends. The cons is that it will almost always be during those peak hours from like four to eight or four to seven or 3.30 to eight or whatever it is, just because parents are getting off of work, their kids are getting out of school and now they're going to play soccer. So you have to weigh the personal sacrifice and your opportunity cost in doing that versus maybe working like volunteer at a club where you're in a more competitive environment. So you have to weigh the, the pros and cons and, and what your opportunity cost is for that. Because sometimes what, what I've done and I experienced it, it was always during the peak hours. So it always started at 4.30, but it always finished at 8. So like I lost that big chunk of time, but I was making money. I was making like 30 or $40 an hour. So I wasn't really complaining, but if I could do it again, I would like to work in a more competitive environment during that time. Joining a youth organization where you're being able to be paid as a coach I think is a, a very good starting point and it's a good opportunity to build a network of coaches and bridges and relationships so you can get your next position or you can get offered to do something um, more in that club and you know get promoted and work up work your way up to maybe you're getting your own team number four would be camps and clinics so this is based off of how good of a network you actually have because Traditionally, camps and clinics are going to be seasonal. So you're going to have your summer, your winter, your Thanksgiving, um, maybe your your specialty spring break or your specialty clinics where you're shooting or finishing or something like that. These are either run by other private trainers or these are run by organizations. And having a good network or having a good connection or relationships with people that are making those decisions or running those camps is crucial because they'll start asking you, hey, come be a coach. Now, the good thing about this and the bad thing about this is it's a lot of money in a short period of time. Now, that's good because you're making money, but it's bad because they're traditionally only two to three days max, okay? That's the real problem and they're seasonal. So maybe four camps or clinics a year, depending on whatever organization or person that you're working with. The more you're able to work on these camps, the more you're able to build connections and networks with parents, players, and other coaches. Eventually, maybe you do number one where you're starting your own training business, then you can offer your own camps and clinics during those seasons or more regularly, depending on what your schedule is like. Number five would be high school soccer. Now, high school soccer, again, like your camps and clinics, is seasonal. Traditionally, at least in California, we start in November and we finish the beginning of February, March. COVID year is a just a big asterisk we start in like the springtime we finish in like maybe the beginning of june total one-off year but with high school soccer the pros would be working in the high school environment which is extremely beneficial in terms of growing your coaching to see whether or not you actually like working in the coat the high school environment whether you see yourself maybe you have the opportunity to work with jv fresh soft or the varsity team girls or boys, depending on which one, maybe you prefer one or the other. The high school season, very short, has a quick turnaround in terms of games, very little like developmental work. It's mostly from the get-go, you have conditioning, fitness, and then you're straight into like tactical game work, and then you start playing games immediately. The pros, like I said, you're in that environment, you're learning, you get to grow as a coach because it's 11 v 11. Um, the, the pros, again, would be most times they have at least three to four paid positions. If not, you could always volunteer your time. That'd be a good opportunity to get on that staff, but you're not gonna be making money. If you do get onto the staff, the head coach makes the most. <laughs> and then you have every coach after the head coach for the varsity is, is technically a head coach, but you're just working with like Fresh Soft or, or JV. My stipend for high school was like 3,500. Um, you get it at the end of the season. So you're working and you have to, again, you have to determine your opportunity cost of doing a high school season because you're gonna be starting in November and you'll be finishing in the beginning of March and it's after school. 
during the middle of the day and then you have games at night. So you have to weigh your opportunity costs in terms of doing a complete high school season and not getting that instant reward, but you have to wait until the end of the season in order to get your uh, your paycheck. So that's kind of, a, a, that's what you have to look at. The last one, which is the big kicker, if you can actually get it in your first year or you're working your way up as a coach would be club soccer. Now, club soccer is like the, you know, the top of the pillar, the top of the food chain when it comes to coaching because you get paid 12 months out of the year even if your players aren't playing. So club soccer, you make money when their high school season is happening. So the kids on your team that are playing high school, those three or four months that you're not having a team practice or anything like that, you're still being paid money. Now, how much you get paid really depends on the club and the city that you're working in and the flight or the what division your team is a part of. If you have, say, like ECNL girls and you're 2003, which would be the oldest group, you're making a minimum a thousand dollars okay now that doesn't sound like a lot but you know that's an additional twelve thousand a year if you have more than one team say you have two girls teams oh three and oh four maybe you're making a thousand dollars each you're making two thousand dollars now the head coach of those teams you're making a lot more than a thousand dollars but the minimum is a thousand dollars your goal if you're just getting into this the sport and just getting into coaching you're trying to get onto those teams as like an assistant or a volunteer or just some help where you can eventually work your way into a paying job. Now my own little story, in the mornings I did volunteer work for the university that I'm currently being paid for now, but I was unpaid. That was a majority of my morning. Started off at like eight o'clock in the morning, finished at one o'clock. Then I went and did youth soccer where I was making about $40 an hour. And that was Monday through Friday. And then once this high school soccer season came around, I did like Monday, Wednesday, Friday was like youth soccer because our high school practice was from like 2 to 3.30 or 2 to 4. So I had the flexibility. So I was being paid stipend for high school. But then at nighttime, I would go do youth soccer. And during the wintertime, I would do clinics. So make, I made about $600 in three days. But again, it was seasonal. With that said... Those are some of the ways that I think you can make money or start getting an idea of how you can make money if you're starting out in the world of coaching. These are some ideas, some areas that you can look into and just a realistic approach and understanding about what it's going to cost you in order to get that. And so what I mean by it's gonna cost you is I mean it's gonna cost your time and it's going to make you have to weigh the opportunity versus experience that you may get if you took an unpaid position. With that said, I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. I hope this gives you an idea of what you can look forward to in 2021. It's a new year, it's a fresh start. If you're starting off in the world of coaching, hopefully this sheds some light on some opportunities that you can look for within your city, your area, wherever you're wor working or wherever you want to work. If you guys have any questions, I'd love to answer them. Leave a comment down below, send me an email to my coaching email, reach out on Instagram, whatever is the con most convenient way for you. With that said, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Peace.